happy Tuesday. Welcome back to another episode of The Practice. This show is an unrehearsed screen recording of my workflow inside Cinema 4D and other digital art applications. My name is Stuart. I'm a 3D artist, illustrator, sometimes animator, and your pal, and I'm fired up to have you back again this week. Uh, continuing the Halloween theme, keeping that moving forward, and having a lot of fun putting together you know, a rendition, a simplified rendition of one of your favorite horror movie characters. And I want to leave it as generic as that. I think you all know who we're working on today. And uh, he, he's a, a perennial favorite and a lot of fun to, to model. And I've been doing a series, um, I sort of put the series down for a little while, but I'm working on this series of well-known characters that are very simply built, especially in the way that their bodies are put together. And it's it's really it's an exercise in, in how minimal of a version of a character can we create but still have enough of the, the essence that really makes that character um, recognizable and distinct and, and, and bake that into a very simple version of it and still, still have it be recognizable. So that's what we're working on today. You can see uh, we're already underway in this recording here, uh, blocking out the basic shapes, just using primitives to really get your, your simple body shape in there. And then the other, the other really fantastic thing about this character is he's going to give us a lot of opportunity to get in there and use the sculpting tools and make a really interesting, organic, uh, very distorted and roughened face. And we're going to use uh, not only the sculpting tools, but the body paint uh, tools. And we're going we're gonna to get in there and really add a lot of rich detail to the face. And and so here we go. I'm adding in some subdivisions, turning on the symmetry, which is actually best done inside the symmetry uh, tab of the, you know, tool that you're using, the individual sculpt tool that you're using. You see, I've got real-time symmetry turned on here. And in, in previous videos, I was using this, this like other uh, sculpt symmetry tag and, and uh, or not a tag, the sculpt symmetry palette and manually adding uh, symmetry. Uh, but it's much easier to have that be done real time. Um, and then once I've gotten these symmetrical parts of the face done, I, I go ahead and turn off symmetry. And you can see I'm adding in these little bumps and divots. And, and I think they're, they're meant to be burns. And this, this character is really horribly defigured. So it was a, a lot of fun to get in there and push and pull these polygons into this really rough, burnt up surface. And what, you, what you can do is um, you can use the command tool to or sorry, the command key while pressing the tool to have the opposite effect take place. So I'm using the pull tool here to pull up areas of the face. And then I'm using the command button while using the pull tool to have uh, indentations be pushed in. So between the two of those, you can really have most of the work uh, that you need to done. The pull tool's really pretty powerful. And any places that are a little too high or a little too rough, I go ahead and use the shift key, and that'll, that'll smooth things out. So here I'm going in and saving out a PSD of this texture because I want it to uh, be layered. You can see that I'm going into body paint here, setting that stuff up, grabbing a brush, adding a layer here. I'm going to go ahead and start painting in some red and pinkish tones into the depressed indentations in the face and really further that burnt look. I'm going through and painting. And it's great to be able to do this in layers because if I, if I mess up an area, and you'll see later I decide that I'm not 100% sold on um, the exact colors that I've used, so it made it really easy to turn down transparency and adjust that a little bit. Um, here I'm grabbing a new color, sort of a brighter orange color, and, and turning the brush size down using the uh, bracket keys. Just painting in additional dark colors in there. This was really a lot of fun to put together. I was really pleased with how it came out too. So uh, hopefully you can pick something up from this and start using the sculpt tool yourself. Here you see in the, in the brushes presets, there's uh, this, this kind of, uh, they call it the chalk brush. It's got sort of a rough surface. So that helps get some, some kind of distressed rough textures in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and start, you know, uh, start texturing and, and adding materials and getting the rest of this character all set up. And then we're going we're gonna to export and shoot over to Mixamo 
get a very simple walk cycle going. So here we got to get that, that quintessential striped sweater going. Of course, adding some subdivisions here, because once we bring that over to Mixamo, we're going we're gonna to need all those subdivisions so we can get smooth bends in the geometry. I'm just using a gradient here to make the striped sweater. What you can do is just click double knots. That's a super easy way to get you know, stripes with a simple gradient. So again, just adjusting those, getting those set up. Nice striped shirt. And I think already now we've got a pretty strong likeness. It's really starting to look like this particular horror movie character. I think the one last thing we're missing is a hand here. And I think in hindsight, I made these hands a little bit too big. And if I were to redo this piece at all, I think this, this one hand is, is a little bit too big. But, you know, I had a little fun with these, you know, these characters in this series, just keeping them really simple and, and um, almost kind of childlike or, or, I don't know, goofy or humorous in their proportions and in, the, in their simplicity. They almost look like a Duplo character or something like that. So that's sort of intentional. So here we go, exporting, uh, exporting an FBX here, uploading to Mixamo. I think I accidentally up, uh, exported a DAE at first, which, uh, which Mixamo does not like. So I had to go ahead and update that. First, I didn't, I couldn't realize why Mixamo wasn't accepting it. So I went and pushed all this geometry into a single object. And then I realized, no, it needs to be an FBX. So I undid all that, uploaded the file, and it recognized it pretty well, which is great. Now, some of the textures weren't lining up, but that's okay, because frequently you need to retexture as you bring it back in. So anything that had uh, gradients or any of the paint over was not recognized by Mixamo. A lot of times it's only really the flat, very simple textures that wind up coming through. So there we go, it had been mapped pretty good. I use a pretty low level of detail on the fingers. Kept those relatively simple. And I, I like this sort of creeping, sneaking kind of walk cycle. It felt right for the character and, and the creepiness of, uh, of the atmosphere, so. So here we go, we're importing that new, that new mesh all rigged up and looking good. And I just went ahead and threw in the textures that we already had. Got those going. Here we go sleeves and the face. Now the one last thing we're mix missing from this character is his, uh, his very recognizable claw. He's got a glove with these like knives at the fingers. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, create that. But first, I'm noticing there's a bit of an issue with the way um, some of these fingers were mapped to the joints. And so what I do here is I go in and it, it was a little bit of a painstaking progress, but you know, Mixamo is so quick to rig otherwise that sometimes you just have to deal with these little hiccups when they don't, they don't, uh, they don't fit perfectly. The mesh doesn't sit perfectly on the, the bone structure. So I just went in here and used the weight tool and sort of isolated some of the geometry along with the appropriate um, the appropriate joints in the skeleton. It's a little bit hard to follow here, but you use the weight tool to paint areas in that will be affected by a specific joint. And since this one was, there was some sort of error where the joint was not properly mapped to the, to the uh, geometry. So that's what I'm working on now. And it's helpful with this sometimes because a little bit of the geometry as it's getting distorted uh, are sort of hidden and you can't really map them. So what I do is I use that uh, Magic Solo plugin. 
is one of the only plugins I use routinely in Cinema. And then you can, that way you can isolate some of the geometry and it's much easier to just paint every edge of it. Another thing you can do is turn on the uh, visible only option inside the uh, weight tool, which is under the character tab. Um, and there you can see we're getting it much closer. Just finessing some details here. And so, since I didn't really want much motion on the hand, what I wound up doing is um, straightening out a lot of this stuff and keeping the finger animation really minimal and just mapping the, the entire finger to one uh, mid-hand joint. And I wonder now if it would have been a little bit easier actually to have a higher level of detail on the fingers. I wonder if that would have solved some of these problems. Occasionally what I'll even do if I don't feel like going through and painting these is I will re-upload the file or alter the position of the joints uh, using Mixamo. Uh, but sometimes, you know, with these automated plug-in type things like Mixamo, it, it takes a little bit of trial and error, a little bit of finessing and back and forth to get things the way you need them. And that's okay. All part of the process. There's still one little bit of weirdness on that thumb. Got that taken care of. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is, is texture this left hand up and put, put the claw glove on it. So here I'm making the little, the little blades for this, this claw. And this would have gotten horribly deformed if I had tried to upload the model with these into Mixamo. Really, you can only, I think only, sometimes I think you can get a sword in there, although I've never done that myself. Anytime I added, I've added anything to a character's hand that's been rigged using Mixamo, I'll always use this same method. Um, and what that is is just, you know, having only the character itself be a part of the initial model. And then after it's rigged, you can see what I'm doing here is I'm adding the geometry, the new geometry, into the skeleton itself. Um, and if you find the right point to add that, it'll just, it'll move pretty seamlessly with the rest of the model. Um, and then what I'm doing here is I'm going ahead and I'm just grabbing um, this lighting and background setup I had from a previous model in the series. It's really, it's a, it's a disc on the floor with a luminant texture and it's a, uh, a sky object that has the same luminant texture on it, and I use some compositing tags to eliminate any shadowing between the two. And so we're getting close here. I'm really loving this bright red background, especially as it looks, uh, as, as it relates to the stripes in the sweater and the, the textures on the face. Um, just really moving the lights around here, dialing in some of that lighting. Wasn't liking the way the stripes were mapping to the top of that, so I adjusted. Adding some reflection to the eyes, which usually gives them a bit of life. It makes them look sort of glossy. And this lighting was feeling a little too direct and sort of overhead. So what I wound up doing was taking the, the overhead light and moving it off to the right and getting a nice sort of highlight. So I think we'll get to that soon. So that hat was sort of interrupting the way the light was falling on the face. And that was feeling a little more interesting, a little more dramatic. And it was also the, the direction of the lighting and the shadowing was, was ex, uh, exaggerating and improving the bumpy look of the details we added to the face. So... That's always a thing to consider is if you've modeled ge nice geometry and it's not showing up the way you want it to, you might want to take a look at lighting because that, that will frequently impact um, you know, the way the geometry is viewed. Getting really close now. Just tweaking a few little things, and I see that um, 
the the low light, the shadowed area of the face needed a little something else. So I went ahead and took the uh, took that light and made it kind of bluish purple, so that the shadows would have a little bit of life to them and a little bit of extra color. And here we did we uh, we're about to get renderings the final pass of renderings going and here's where I'm glad I kept layers on in this texture because because of all the red lighting the light red bits of uh, the burns were sort of getting blown out and weren't as visible as I would have liked them so I went ahead and darkened those up and now we're in the final pass of rendering so knocking out those final frames these will these will run for a little while here, and I wound up actually doing is is uh, cutting off the recording for just a moment here. So this will render for another minute or so. almost to the point here where I wind up killing the recording until the rendering's finished, so bear with me now. This is much quicker than the original time that it took to render, which was, I think, north of an hour. So here we go, got that last couple of renderings to finish up here, the last couple of frames, rather. And then it's just a, another quick minute of retouching in After Effects. Turn down the frame rate, looping this guy up a little bit, and adding just a bit of color correction, adding a bit of blue to the shadows using curves, a little bit of adjustment to the hue and the overall levels. And we'll be able to call it a final animation. Really pleased with how this one came out. Might be my favorite of the Halloween series so far. Um, a really fun character to work on. Love getting some practice in with the sculpting tools. Something I think I want to use more of uh, in my work overall, but also in the practice. And I want, I want, to share, uh, I want to share my progress as we work on that. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to drop one in the comments below. If you want to keep up with me and the work that I'm doing, please check me out on Instagram at DLGNCE. And until next week, this is Stuart saying goodbye. Thanks.